I want to begin a discussion um, about cognition and about the mind and, and uh, what it means to think and to act in the world. Um, because I think this is sort of the, the last hurdle that science is, is trying to uh, jump in, in, in finding some um, explanation for, for everything that exists. Um, they seem to have the physical world mapped out pretty well. The biological world is uh, eh, not far behind, but the mental world seems, um, for the most part, up in the air. Um, it's very hard to have a science of the mind. Um, but uh, basically, if, if you look at um, the prevailing mythos of our, of our culture at, at this time, it seems like we consider outer space to be the final frontier. That uh, once we realize that we are living on one planet and one solar system and one galaxy among millions and billions of others, that the truth is out there. And for the most part, <laughs> it's black emptiness. Um, unknown and uh, that seems to characterize our whole view of, of everything these days in regards to the truth the truth seems like something that we as individuals animals living on such a tiny planet in such a gigantic possibly infinite cosmos is truth is just something we don't have access to because it's it's out there it's out there it's up there you know, and I don't, I don't, I don't see this as uh, as as entirely correct because I think it's not matter that's fundamental. Because if you think the truth is uh, is this this uh, space that we live in, then obviously you're saying what's really real is the material physical world. And I'm not denying that 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 there is some kind of uh, world out there, but if, if we're going to find, if we, want, if we want truth and insight and understanding, we're not going to find it out there. We're going to find it in here. And so by studying consciousness, by studying our own experience, by um, increasing the depth of our, of our understanding of our, ourselves through introversion, through introspection, through, through studying what the mind is. So the final frontier is not space. The final frontier is the mind. And um, so cognitive science is is the forefront of this of this discussion. Um, and uh, I mentioned um, in a text comment uh, the three basic um, traditions of cognitive science. Um, the the most traditional one um, is uh, cognitivism which really stemmed out of the work of um, Noam Chomsky and uh, his understanding of, of the basic structures underlying language, the basic grammatical structures, and that, that they're based on these very discrete logical rules. Um, and right at the same time as, as Chomsky uh, came out with that work about 50 years ago, the computer uh, technology was really starting to take off and um, the notion of artificial intelligence became tenable as we, we realized how powerful these machines could be. Um, and then uh, a guy named Jerry Fodor came up with a theory um, about, it's called the language of thought. And basically this is, this is the traditional um, cognitivist paradigm where uh, the brain is basically a collection of symbols and uh, through our senses the brain collects information from the environment in order to uh, run some program, some definite formal symbolic process that leads to an output or a motor response to whatever the sensory input was. Um, and this idea was is still popular for 
amongst a lot of academics, but um, it began to seem a bit reductionistic um, with the rise of a new type of computing called um, complex systems, um, neural nets, connectionism. These systems aren't based on programmable rules. They're based on the notion of um, learning, that a system to be intelligent as humans are intelligent needs to be able to learn in, in an uninhibited way. And so it, it, it's not this formal logic that, that the brain runs, but it's more of um, a, a process, an ongoing process of connections between separate nodes that leads to these emergent patterns. Um, and, and this was definitely a step beyond uh, the traditional cognitivism because, first of all, a neural net is basically uh, it's, a, it's a collection of individual nodes that are trained to uh, solve problems. And, um, you know, a lot of these neural nets still have to be trained by an, an, outside, uh, an outside computer scientist. Um, that, for example, would raise or lower the power of a specific node in order to get the whole pattern to emerge in the correct way to accomplish whatever the task is that, that the device is engaged in. Um, so basically, this this notion of, of using uh, complex systems to understand the mind, it treats the mind as an emergent property. Whereas for cognitivism, the mind is it's a way of speaking. It's It's how we as human beings in a world describe what we're doing but really from a scientific perspective there is no such thing as a mind because you can't find it anywhere in the physical world um, emergentism doesn't disagree per se it just says the mind is this process that goes on in the neural net this pattern that arises that if you froze the system in time would disappear, but because it's functioning through time, always changing, um, this emergent phenomenon called mind is is there in the process, not in the physical atomistic components itself, but in the process that they allow to occur. Um, so emergentism is, is, is still pretty popular now, um, but then there's also um, the newest and the most radical, uh, by most accounts, uh, way of approaching cognition is called inactivism. And what inactivism really adds to all of this is, first of all, it puts the whole science of cognition into uh, a philosophical context. Um, it shows that both cognitivism and emergence are basing their scientific approaches on Cartesian dualism. The idea that the mind or the brain is somehow separated from the world. Um, not just separated in the sense that it's in my skull and not just floating out there in the open air. Separated in the sense that I only have access to the world by means of these conceptual, uh, symbolic um, frameworks, a language of thought, as, as Fodor said. Um, and this language of thought is all that I have access to to structure my world. So it treats the world as this, the outside world as this atomistic structure that these internal atomistic structures try to mimic. And this is, uh, it's a very mechanistic model and it's a very dualistic model, and inactivism wants to change the whole framework. And um, I'm going to start talking a little bit about inactivism in my next post. So thanks for listening.